Welcome to the Arclight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. In today's video, we are going to be doing episode 3 of the Arclight Rumblings podcast. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Blue Max. How's it going, Blue Max? Doing well. How are you, Minnie? I'm doing pretty well indeed. We've got some awesome hot fixes we're going to go over in this episode. We've also Yes, we do. We also have our top three PvP decks that we are both playing. Uh, we say three, it might be a little bit more, but we are going to look at them and decide what we might replace a certain nerfed unit uh, with that got nerfed in this hot pat, or hot fix, rather. Um, mm -hmm. And then we are also going to be going over some minis that we think might gain the most from this specific unit being nerfed. Um, so yep. you will find out what that unit is very quickly here. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to split the, the episode into two parts, like always. First half is going to be on my channel. Second half is going to be on Blue Max's channel. So if you haven't been checking out the second half of the episode, please go over there and do that. Drop him a sub, drop him a like. Um, we really appreciate it. So, indeed, you ready to hop into it, Blue Max? Let's 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 get rolling. Alrighty. So, incoming changes in this hotfix will address a few issues and help to balance minis and talents. Please note that these changes were being implemented prior to the PvP crash and matchmaking issues being discovered. We appreciate everyone's patience and understand how frustrating it is not to be able to play PvP right now. We are working to get fixed out as soon as possible. Um, this makes a lot of sense to me. I know that there mm -hmm. were some very specific people, uh, and a lot of people actually in the community discord that were mad about mm -hmm. this hotfix not fixing PvP issues. Um, but I think it makes sense. You can't just like... If you're already working on something, you can't just delay it because you don't have the answer to something else. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like if you're at a restaurant with six other people and like five of the dishes are ready to be served and you're just waiting on the sixth one. So the other five are getting cold. Kind of like that. Um, yeah. I'm sure the PvP bugs will be fixed soon. Fingers crossed. Hopefully within the next couple of days. But you just got to be more patient. No, no, absolutely. And and honestly, you don't want them rushing that hotfix because what if in the process of correcting this issue, they introduce new issues? Um, that it's, it's just a delicate balance and it, and it is frustrating. Um, so if you can't do PvP right now, uh, it's very possible you have up to 300 quests queued up. Um, definitely, you can definitely push that. It won't be as fun, but it'll still allow you to progress minis. And that's uh, that's a key thing. Well, I I do agree. Patience is great, and don't want to mess it up, especially if it's supposed to be a fix. Uh, however, mm -hmm. as someone with three hundred quests saved up and who doesn't even <laughs> do rare quests, um, I would not take that advice personally. I don't think I would oh, do a quest if I couldn't PvP. I think I would just shut the game <laughs> off for a little bit. <laughs> Where but, is your dedication? <laughs> yeah, it's down the drain when it comes to quests <laughs> well let's just throw a good show on anyway all right so in pvp uh we have rocket tower changes they are now siege damage instead of elemental um and treasure chests inactive chests should no longer be attackable with spells during the beginning of a match as intended yes, yes. great change um uh, max do you want to explain what that bug was like yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I didn't often see people exploiting it using spells. I saw it with Safe Pilot. But basically, in those first 15 seconds of the map, the chests are not supposed to be... They're, they're not visible on the map, and they're not unlockable by ground units. But unfortunately, you could unlock them by casting a spell or using a Safe Pilot. And so... You, you had a little bit of frustration because there are some people that are kind of, you know, kind of anal like me uh, and rule followers, rule followers who just adamantly refused to uh, take advantage of it. But then you've got more more realistic people, more pragmatic people that are like, look, if I don't take a chest, my opponent's going to take one and they're going to get a two gold on me. So you can definitely see both sides. Uh, of, of this argument, not 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 super clear cut. So it's just really good that this is getting corrected. Yeah, and they fixed it pretty quick, which is very awesome. Um, and then rocket very tower, quick. rocket tower being siege damage rather than elemental um, immediately mm -hmm. makes me think that um, this is for Quillbore. Um, however, I don't think yeah. it, I personally don't think it does enough. 
to Quilbor. Just, uh, like, he's still gonna distract towers the way he always does. Like, people are using him in the arrow tower meta. Um, mm -hmm. So, I think he's still probably pretty good here. Let's... Yeah, but it... But it does, but it does reduce his uh, longevity. So That's it true. is, it is a nerf. It is a nerf. That is for sure. Okay, let's move yeah. on to leaders. Emperor Thorsan mm -hmm. should now properly display the tank trait as intended. Uh, not going to talk about it a lot there. It's just a little bug fix. Troops, yeah. Chimera health has been re increased to four sixty from four fifty, which doesn't seem like a lot. But it scales every level. Uh, that's the base, mm -hmm. and then with the Le Leviathan talent, getting ten percent up to three times per deploy is not bad it's not too bad of a buff so what yep. are your thoughts on that max well i think you have to pair i think you have to pair that discussion with the uh with, with the with the next few lines it's very possible that this was the next few lines in the in the bug fix notes because it's very possible this was designed to alter interactions with that uh, particular unit that oh. got a serious nerf. All That's right. my thought, at least. You know what? I agree. So let's just go ahead and read the rest of this real quick, and then we'll get back okay. to that. So, safe pilot initial sure. crash explosion damage has been reduced to 220 from 250. Uh, we'll skip Cold War for right now. Safe pilot cloaking device. Okay. Ambush has been removed. There will no longer be a damage multiplier when attacking from stealth. That's what ambush is. And then yep. coming in hot talent now also reduces initial crash damage by 33 percent from 220 to 145 and i believe i saw on the discord that this math when compared to each other is that the cloaking device does five more damage at level one than the crash plus the coming in hot so it's cloaking mm -hmm. device is just a bit more damage but yeah. this is quicker deploy and a dot which is not bad. And 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 guaranteed damage because uh, even if uh, safe pilot is cloaked, she can still an an area of effect uh, hit will still hit her. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So that seems to be pretty good for our friend the Chimera, who was recently well, he's our newest unit other than Emperor Thorsen, and he was kind of mm -hmm. unplayable because of safe pilot, um, which doesn't seem like a place you want your new showcase unit to be. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. So, okay. So, so many, I haven't seen Chimera in PVP much. So could you basically explain, did safe pilot at equal level take out Chimera or did it need to have a level? Do you know? Um, at equal level, it took out. Um, so not only that, but with mm -hmm. Leviathan fully stacked at equal level, safe pilot used to kill it with the landing and the gnomish cloaking device ambush damage. That's pretty significant. Yeah, it was it was rough for old Chimera. Um, yep. Though, we'll see if this means he'll be in the meta or not. I'm not so convinced. I don't know that five gold. Is he five or six gold? See, that's how little I play five him. Gold. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chi Chimera is five gold. I, I, I agree with you. Um, you just don't see many high cost minis in PvP, mm -hmm. and so I think you're gonna have to have a, um, either a you know like a theme or meme deck that is just heavily focused on Chimera, and I'm just not sure it has the uh, effectiveness to to warrant that. But uh, you know what? Watch out uh, with within Diablo gaming, we've got several you know very uh, very creative theory crafters. Maybe one of them will come up with. Uh, with the deck and surprise us and yeah. that'll be great absolutely um yeah so let's talk about the quill war bristleback that we skipped over um, uh -huh. this change it had a 0.5 second delay uh between procs on the same target so this does okay nothing basically except it prevents your two gold quill war from killing sneed now he didn't quite kill him on even level uh, but he got him very mm -hmm. very low um, yeah, because of how yeah. Sneed attacks, he just does like this buzzsaw blade that does a bunch of little ticks of damage uh, yep. over the attack. And it was just awful for him. So this is I okay. I like this change. I don't think it does anything other than make it to where a two gold unit doesn't kill a five gold unit, which is no yeah. pretty good. That 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 sounds like a fair that sounds like a fair balance change. Yeah. So so Quilbor gets a a nerf 
to a very specific interaction, and that is with Sneed. Um, and it gets a nerf um, problem well well with uh, with rocket towers. So mm -hmm. sounds like sounds like safe pilot got the majority uh, got the majority of the uh, the the, uh, uh, the damage, so to speak, mm -hmm. from this the particular bat. hot fix. <laughs> mm -hmm. The nerf bat, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely, oh. and and that is a shame. Oh, sorry, Minnie. Um, no. Go ahead. Continue. Your okay. Thought. Yeah. No. No. I was just gonna say. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining about it. I think I think this is warranted. Um, time will tell if they hit the nail on the head or whether maybe they they nerfed her too much. Um, it is just a shame because you know a lot of people, myself included, um, devoted a legendary core to Safe Pilot, but. Honestly, I, I'm okay with this because it just means that it's going to shake the meta up and force people to, you know, just kind of do some thinking and, and find find something else to, to work in her place. Or keep using her and just be aware of her limitations. Mm -hmm. Um, So, as far as the Legendary Core goes, what do you think about compensation? Mm -hmm. So in Hearthstone, when they mm -hmm. nerf or change a card in any way... Um, they allow mm -hmm. you to disenchant it to get mm. basically the mats you use to craft it back so that you can get another okay. card of the same rarity without having mm -hmm. to sacrifice too much. Um, now, in this game, okay. I don't see that happening at all. It's, I mean, it's a live service game, but so is Hearthstone. But it's just, I don't mm -hmm. know if they have the tech in place to be able to do that to easily let players get their cores back, get their arc light energy back, um, get their gold back for yeah. stars if they wanted it. That tech probably yeah. isn't in place, and it would probably be a massive headache. So I'm guessing that there won't be any sort of, um, any sort of, like, ability to revert it. Now, do you mm -hmm. think there might be some sort of, like, compensation for it? Like, do you think they will gift players arc light energy, or something along those lines once again this is just all discussion points i don't think any of that's gonna mm -hmm. happen um but I don't either. We, we might be surprised who knows yeah i no, i i don't either um i think i think that's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles and as as warcraft rumble matures and um you know is played longer and more and more people have invested arc light energy and cores into units i think it's just going to be a natural progression a natural flow in which uh units uh are cycled in and out of the meta you know based upon the the data that blizzard happen has you, you you see that in um i I've, I've mentioned before i played brawl stars pretty competitively mm -hmm. and sure you can have the same situation where you've invested a good amount of gold and power points into a unit and then it gets a nerf and um there, there's no compensation there now, I, I do think the idea of being able to decouple Arclight Energy and a Legendary Core from a unit for some for some amount of expense uh, does sound like an interesting thought for down the road. I don't think you need to do that with Epic Cores and certainly not Rare Cores. Um, there's just so much value to be gained, and plus, you don't have the same scarcity with those resources. So, yes... I would be interested in seeing uh, legendary cores be uh, be decoupled in the future. In fact, I had not given that uh, the slightest bit of thought until you mentioned it. Interesting idea. All right, that is an interesting yeah. idea. Being able to decouple cores from things would be mm -hmm. pretty solid. Maybe for a small arc light energy fee. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. You know. Whatever works. Whatever they figure out with that. But yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. awesome. Now, another question for you about the this hotfix. I like calling it a okay. hotfix, in quotations, because as much as this is just a hotfix, this is really the mm -hmm. first time we've had any sort of balance changes, and so to me, um, it feels like a patch, because it's bringing us something that players have been asking for for a long time, is a safe pilot mm -hmm. nerf. Um, mm -hmm. So... Are you happy with how they did this in the middle of the season? Or would you prefer them to nerf things at the beginning of a season when things are kind of new and fresh? Oh oh I I think I think I think doing uh doing a nerf like this at the beginning of a season 
makes the most sense, but for, but at the same time, you know, uh, uh, again, Rumble is, you know, it, it's like they're still getting the game off the runway, so to speak. So mm-hmm. I expect, I expect a little bit of turbulence and uh, a little bit of a, a bumpy cycle. So I'm not too, I'm not too concerned about it. But yes, I think ideally. I think ideally balance changes like this should be should take place at the beginning of the season. All right. Um, yeah. Well, cool. I um I don't know my thoughts on it just yet. Um, okay. It it feels like maybe this is something that they should do at the start of a season, um, unless something is super egregious. And I guess like Safe Pilot's been egregious for a long time, so maybe this mm-hmm. is. This is great. Um, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm happy it happened. But I don't know whether I would prefer it at the start of a season or in the middle. So, well, I don't know. Well, well speaking... Yeah. Well, speaking of egregious, um, we did have what I would call an emergency balance change during uh, last season with Arathi Basin. When when um, you still had a smaller percentage of players having defeated Anixia and had deep breath, think about what we had back in early December. Everyone was running deep breath and double dragon and just slaying, absolutely slaying. Yeah. And it was a really, really good move to um, maybe it's not perfect implementation, uh, reworking double dragon, but getting double dra- dragon reworked to where it no longer just melted the barracks. Yeah. That, that was an, that's a, that's another example. Yeah. Definitely uh, where it was done well. Yeah, I think so. You're probably right. I think mm-hmm. that if it's egregious, fix it and don't wait for the new season. I think that's probably yeah. where my, my opinion has landed. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Let's switch over now to talking about our favorite leaders for the okay. season. Um, so, my first favorite leader is Maya, of course. <laughs> um, I'm sure you play her too. My build is Maya, Griffin Rider, with the range talent, safe pilot with gnomish cloaking device, dark iron miner with the gold mine talent. However, it's any of the talents are fine. Um, Quibor with bristleback, well pegs with flame burst, and skeletons with exhum, where they get the two extra skeletons if deployed near a tower or meeting stone. Um, yep. I love this deck. I think it's fantastic. This is all like, um. Oh, what's the saying? What's the saying? Um, all honesty, this is not my deck. This is Kalathumos' deck. This is what he's been playing. He's, I think, the number one rated player in the world right now. It is mm-hmm. very solid. Yeah. Now, even with the safe pilot nerfs, I think safe pilot still has a spot in this deck. Um, she's still yes. going to be very good. She will help you um, control chests deny enemy gold, she reduces the cost of Maev by one when you play her, and she's just on-demand support anywhere. So I think she's still going to be good, she's just not going to be egregious, but especially in this deck, you'll still want to run her. I agree. Max, do you have any variations to Maev? Oh, I I do. Um, But I was only able to get up to 4,500 using this today. Uh, Basically, same deck with you, except... I've been playing my level 10 Huntress instead of Griffin. Um, And maybe that sounds a little crazy because that does cause the deck to go up to 3,600. But specifically, uh, specifically, I'm running Earth Elemental instead of Quillbore. Okay. And sounds a little odd, but Mm -hmm. I got a couple reasons for it. Um, And that is... With Guard Towers, Earth Elemental absorbs a lot more damage and stays alive a lot longer. Uh, its Siege Damage does more damage to the enemy target, uh, to the ba- ba- to the tower. And you can use Earth Ellie to basically lead enemies away from your ranged units. Because inst- unlike Quillbore, who actually turns and attacks, Earth Elemental just walks away. Earth Elemental doesn't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a kind of like the honey badger. badger. Yep, that's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's worked okay for me. Well, good. Uh, I 
so I still use Quillbore just because he helps contest treasure chests uh, while still doing the, you know, tanking of the towers. Not quite as effectively, but sure. he's great at turning around a rend and claiming treasure chests. So that's what I use. And then Griffin Rider is just so cheap, it's hard oh, for me yeah. to not use it. But I understand Huntress. Huntress could be pretty eh. solid. I'm I'm just I'm just playing around. I'm just trying to find some way to uh, contest the meta. So no, nothing special. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Now, do you play Rind or Baron? Um, I I I am playing Baron right now. Do you play Rind? Uh, I yes, I, I played Rind a lot last season. Had had Rind over five k. Um. Yes. So my current Rin deck is only at 4,000. I just haven't played him that much. Um, Deep Breath with Attunement, not Double Dragon. And this is the one that gives um, resist to everything that, that it touches. Um, well Begs with Flame Burst. Gargoyle, of course. Uh, currently still have Safe Pilot and probably would keep it because it's still just a... a, a uh, a good unit overall, as well as well. I've got Earth Elemental, but Quillbore can be a great sub there as well. Mm -hmm. And Griffin with the potion. Um, this is still just a just a pretty solid deck, you know, um, even from last season. Mm -hmm. A little pricey. Gotcha. Yeah. I. So that sounds like a very solid deck. I have been playing Rind um, instead of Griffin. I've been running Murlocs. Um, I think they're a solid choice, especially because we have so many flyers between Rain, yeah. Gargoyle, uh, Wellpegs. Uh, they don't contest mm -hmm. treasure chests. Um, Deep Breath doesn't contest treasure chests. So really, if yeah. you run the Griffin Rider, you've only got two things to contest treasure chests. And so I made the decision to run uh, Murlocs. And then That's fair. I am running Double Dragon still on Deep Breath. But other than that, mm -hmm. the deck is the same. We've got Wellpegs with Flame Burst. Gargoyle with Wing Buff at the Fly Faster, Safe Pilot, and Quillbore. Um, I might mess around with playing Skeletons over Safe Pilot. We'll have to see. Um, I don't know that we need to do that, but that might be something I try at the very least. Um, yeah. It's always good to experiment. Yeah. Um, and then my third deck that I think is the best is Baron. However... To see that, you're going to have to go to Blue Max's channel because that is the end of part one. We're going to kick it off to part two over there. So link will be okay. in the video description below. Um, mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us today. It's been awesome. We're on episode three so far and really looking forward to doing more. So, Max, anything to say before we head on over to part two? No, let's, uh, let's get rolling. All righty. See you guys over there. Bye.